Hi everyone, Kate here back with another video from Lottery Post. So Mega Millions and Powerball, the United States' two biggest multi-state games that offer players across the country the largest prizes imaginable. These games routinely hold the record for the largest jackpots in the entire world. So when a jackpot is won, you've likely heard that the winner chooses the cash option, which is always advertised as a different amount from the number that's being advertised as the jackpot. There are a bunch of different moving parts that determine the size of this advertised amount, as well as how much a player gets when they win the lottery. For those beginning to learn more about how the lottery works, or for seasoned players who might be able to learn another interesting detail or two, I'm going to break down exactly how these numbers are calculated so that when you're playing the Mega Millions or Powerball games next, you'll be able to know just where those big, crazy amounts are coming from. Before we get started, I should clarify that there are different types of jackpots based on the game that you're playing or in which jurisdiction you play. For the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to be talking about progressive jackpots since I'm using Mega Millions and Powerball as examples. They're the most common type of jackpot, plus I think they're the easiest to understand. So what is a progressive jackpot? A progressive jackpot is one that grows each time a drawing takes place without a winner. There are a variety of different factors and moving parts that influence the growth of the pot. Which brings us to talk about the beginning of a jackpot's life cycle, the starting point. So every time a jackpot is won, the pot returns back to the starting amount, which is usually 40 million for both Mega Millions and Powerball. However, the coronavirus pandemic started slowing down sales around March and April when restrictions on retail businesses were put in place, so the game groups adjusted the starting jackpots to compensate. Those starting jackpots were chopped down to 20 million. So for example, the jackpot has a drawing, but there are no winners. What happens now, and how does that jackpot manage to grow over time? When there are no winners, there is what's called a rollover, which means that the jackpot will grow by a guaranteed fixed amount, also commonly referred to as an increase. The increase for Mega Millions is 5 million, and this amount for Powerball is 10 million. As another side note, the increase amount was also one of the adjustments made to the game to cope with the lack of sales during the coronavirus pandemic. So to allow states to continue generating revenue to support state budgets, the Mega Millions rollover amount was reduced to 2 million, while the Powerball rollover amount eliminated the guaranteed rollover amount and instead changed to only increase based on ticket sales. This brings me to the next point. If you're watching jackpots increasing over time, you would notice that each iteration of a jackpot is not simply rising steadily by the same rollover amount each time. Otherwise, it would take much longer for them to reach those incredibly high amounts, and it could be pretty boring. Lotteries don't want their players to be bored, rather they want to see people excited for those huge amounts of cash. Therefore, jackpot amounts are also based on ticket sales for the previous drawing's prize pool. Now, there are a bunch of different variables that influence ticket sales, thus influencing the jackpot amount. Seasonality or other jackpots certainly have an effect on sales. For example, ticket sales are higher during the holiday seasons, notably around Christmas and generally around the beginning of a new year. Maybe in February or so, sales usually take a dip because of spending fatigue that people experience after the holidays. Another example, let's say sales are up for a high Powerball jackpot. Players who wouldn't otherwise play might be encouraged to buy some tickets for Powerball, plus they might buy a couple tickets for Mega Millions while they're at it in the store. So a high Powerball jackpot might actually give Mega Millions a bump in sales too. Game sales also have a lot to do with timing and are typically stronger for a Saturday drawing versus a Wednesday drawing. It's also worth mentioning that other factors like the current inflation and spiking gas prices might be leaving people with less discretionary money to spend on lottery tickets, which in turn would cause the jackpots to grow more slowly. This morning, gas prices soaring to the highest average ever recorded, $4.17 a gallon. Well, everything from food to clothing, even cars, all costing more in the Inland Empire as inflation soars. I'll throw a couple links down in the description below where you can read up on that more if you're interested. Finally, there's also what's called the annuity factor, which is the cost to fund an estimated annuity price. The estimated annuity prize for a jackpot is what you see being advertised, like when you see lotteries shouting, the jackpot is 320 million. That amount is what pushes casual lottery players to play, like when you hear people say, oh, I only play when the jackpot is at a certain amount. What you see is basically what you'd get. Should you win the lottery, you can choose to receive the annuity prize, which will give you the full advertised amount of 320 million over 30 payments minus applicable federal and state taxes. The annuity factor is a little bit more complicated, so let me explain more. For context, both Mega Millions and Powerball are unique in offering an annuity prize that increases each year. Most other annuity prizes don't actually do that. 
So for example, if you won the jackpot in a local lotto game offered in your state and chose the annuity prize, you would get the same flat payments every single year. Powerball was the first to add a graduated payment system and Mega Millions followed a couple years later. So how exactly do the games offer annually increasing payments? Well, let's say a player chooses the annuity option when they win a jackpot. The advertised jackpot, the big prize you see being advertised everywhere before a draw, is based on the 29 year annuity value consisting of 30 payments. The first payment happens right away. Then the lottery pays the prize out over 29 years in annual returns or the amount winners receive each year for the 29 year period. To fund this prize over 29 years, the lottery buys US government treasury securities, which can earn interest and mature annually over 29 years. Because the value of the prize does degrade over time due to things like inflation and other unforeseen variables in the US economy, the Mega Millions and Powerball games annuity payouts increase by 5% each year. So it's not like you'll be receiving a flat $500,000 payment every year that could depreciate in value over time. The interest rates that make up the annuity factor are the ones that determine how the payments will grow over time when the lottery invests in securities. Interest rates are offered by competing banks and companies prior to when the advertised jackpot is made public for the next drawing. The higher the interest rates, the higher the advertised jackpot. So how is the total annuity amount calculated? Well, calculating the upcoming annuity jackpot happens in a series of steps. It might surprise you, but in order to calculate the annuity, the lottery first has to calculate the cash value of the jackpot. Many people think of the cash value as a number that is roughly half the annuity jackpot, but that's actually looking at things a bit backwards. So to explain, let's take a step back and see what happens step by step after a drawing occurs. So, a drawing occurs and there is no winner. Now the lotteries have to calculate the next advertised jackpot that will be larger than the last. The only thing the lottery knows with certainty at that point is the amount of cash that has been collected in ticket sales since the last time the jackpot was won. Let's call that the cash on hand. Then they will estimate the number of tickets that will be sold before the next drawing based on factors we mentioned earlier, such as the current size of the jackpot, seasonal sales trends, and the state of the economy. They will then take 32.5% of those estimated ticket sales and add it to the cash on hand. This becomes the estimated cash value of the jackpot. Just to be clear, that 32.5% of ticket sales does not include sales from power play and double play add-ons and only funds the jackpot share, not the lower tier prizes. Those are paid by the state of purchase from the remaining 67.5% of sales that stay within the state. Finally, to calculate the annuity jackpot amount, which is the big estimated jackpot that lotteries advertise for the upcoming drawing, they will take the estimated cash value and apply the best interest rates offered by banks, calculating what it will amount to after 30 annual payments. Lotteries often have relationships with more than one financial institution so that they can select the highest interest rate bid each time a new jackpot is calculated. Because new interest rates are used every time a jackpot is calculated, the cash value is not a fixed percentage of the annuity. Now let's say that sales have finally closed and the drawing is about to take place. Well, one thing you might have noticed is that the advertised jackpot that you bought tickets for is usually revised to a slightly different amount that may be announced during or after the drawing. That's because once ticket sales for a drawing close, the lotteries take the actual ticket sales figures and update the cash and annuity jackpots, replacing the previous estimates with the actual amounts. Thanks to technology, this all happens very quickly. For the Powerball game, USA Mega has a great feature that displays the estimated jackpot and the updated actual jackpot for each drawing. So once the amounts have been revised using actual sales from the drawing, the lottery then knows for certain what their cash on hand is, and the cycle starts all over again. So the TLDR of this entire explanation is, lotteries take the previous cash pool, calculate the estimated ticket sales, calculate the cash value because it's a fixed fraction of those sales, and then apply interest rates to the cash value to get the full advertised amount a winner would win over 30 years. <sighs> One more thing we don't want to forget to mention. We've established that about a third of ticket sales contribute toward funding the jackpot, but where does the remaining 68% of ticket sales go? So depending on the state, sales for lottery tickets will go elsewhere in varying amounts. Some of the proceeds will go toward the state treasury to fund programs like public education, road maintenance, public amenities, and some of it will be used to compensate vendors and employees of the lottery. 
as well as pay for all the other expenses of running a lottery. Ticket sales within state cover the other prizes offered by the big progressive jackpot games. The calculations for the jackpot also include guaranteed prizes. These guaranteed prizes, like the second prize of 1 million for both Powerball and Mega Millions, will always remain the same fixed amount, regardless of how big or small the first prize jackpot is. No matter how many people win a guaranteed prize, they will all receive the same amount. So you can have two or 50 or 100 people match five numbers and win a 1 million second prize, and they will all receive 1 million each, taking the multiplier options into consideration, of course. This is not the case for the jackpot, which is split evenly amongst all winners who manage to win it. But the prize money for these guaranteed prizes actually comes from sales for the game within the state. So if 20 people from Florida win a $1 million prize, the Florida lottery would have to pay out 20 million from their own internal budget, not drawing from the shared jackpot pool accumulated by all states. The jackpot amount does not get touched when it comes to paying out the lesser prizes. So this is why it might actually be more of a strain for smaller states with lesser budgets to have to pay out more guaranteed prize winners. However, a jackpot winner is often more celebrated since the winnings are pooled from every state. Well, anyway, there you have it. That is how lotteries calculate each jackpot between drawings for both Mega Millions and Powerball. If you have any more questions or if you have any more suggestions for future topics that you think we should cover, feel free to let us know down in the comments below. And don't forget to also please hit that like button. It really lets us know that you like what you're watching and that you like the content we're putting out. Plus it really helps out our channel and we really appreciate it. Finally, most importantly, don't forget to also hit that subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already so you are ready for when our next video does come out. From all of us at Lottery Post, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Take care. Thank you.